Hi everyone, welcome to your daily dose at home. My name is Laura and I work here at the Calgary Zoo in the education department. You just got a chance to meet Ginny, our red tegu, and she's a fascinating ambassador animal and one that we like to talk to people about a lot. She's got a really cool story and neat messaging. So we're going to continue talking about care for reptiles, care for different pets, and talk a little bit more in depth about enclosure planning and habitat design on a small scale. So I'm in front of the enclosure for Zool, our chuckwalla, which is a cool, cool lizard, super fast, does lots of sunbathing, and needs some different features when we put together an exhibit for them. So like all the animals at the zoo, before we start exhibit planning, we have to consider a number of different factors. We have to consider what their species needs, and that can be everything from special lighting to heating controls, even humidity, different things that we would have to control that would naturally be controlled in the wild for the animal. We also have to look at the individual's needs. So is this an older individual? Is this a younger individual? Are they gonna be in a multi-species exhibit? So just as we talked about weeks ago with enrichment, enclosure design takes all those things even further. So you can see some of the cool features that we've put into Zool's exhibit, and we'll have a chance to look at our parakeets and even some cockroaches to talk a little bit more about them in just a minute. But you can see some cool features we wanna have foliage. This not only mimics some natural habitat, it provides sun protection, it provides a chance for, for different critters. So when we put in crickets or different things like that, they might play around on the little branches. It also provides a surface for us to hang things. So things like lights, things like different UV pieces, different lamps or heaters that we might need to add at different times of the year to balance out the climate that we live in. So all these different things will go in, as well as the different features, you'll see different rocks and logs, and we'll sometimes reposition those. We wanna provide our animals with an opportunity to have quiet time, to get away if things are noisy. Sometimes our classrooms are really busy and kids are really excited. So we wanna try and find a balance between kids being able to see our amazing animals and learn about them, but also having those animals have those breakaway and those timeouts. So we'll rearrange the rocks. We'll make sure we can change the sand, make sure we clean it out. That's a daily thing, cleaning out any poop, leftover food, things that they weren't really in the mood for eating. So we wanna do those repositioning things. We also wanna have lots of natural light wherever is possible. And if we can have them go into multiple enclosures, that's our ideal. So sometimes that's switching enclosures. You learned about that with our Komodo dragons and the different shifting that we have to do. And sometimes it's seasonal. So it's moving them to an entirely different classroom or a different space for the couple months so that they have a new habitat, perhaps more outside access, or just access to different sights, sounds, and smells. So let's take a look at our parakeets next. So now we're in front of our Alexandrian parakeet enclosure. You can see this looks completely different than the reptile enclosure, and that's for many good reasons. So we want things for them to be able to destroy. Parakeets and other birds with really large beaks, they like to explore, they're curious, they're very strong, and they get excited about tearing things up and the more things they can break open. So we have to get creative. Sometimes it's simple things like cardboard or different chunks of, of corrugated cardboard or even small pieces of books. Sometimes it's different nuts, so it's shells that they have to crack open with their beaks. We also wanna try and provide different types of food and we move it around the enclosure as well. So when you're designing the actual exhibit that they go into, same as with the reptiles and with our other animals, we need to look at how much space do they need? How much time are they gonna spend in there? Is it something that can be moved? Some of our smaller enclosures or even our bigger enclosures can be put onto casters and wheels and they can be moved outside. Like we talked about those seasonal moves with some of our reptiles and, and even Sheldon, our tortoise moves seasonally. So these are the different things that we have to consider for birds. Birds are very smart animals. So we're gonna have to give them puzzles. We're gonna have to have an enclosure that's designed for us to safely make those changes and give those birds that enrichment and those challenges that they need. So these birds also get a chance to exercise. So they'll actually come out. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna take a look at one of their outdoor stands. So this is something that we put out in the classroom where the birds can come out, they can explore. They might do a little bit of flying around the room. And this is when there's nobody else in here other than the keeper. So they, same thing, they'll have different, different toys, different things for them to explore. And it's a chance for them to, if they want, come out, the keeper can go in and safely clean their enclosure. That's something that we have to keep in mind for all of our animals. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, how do you go inside and clean? Do the animals just sit and wait? What do they do? For most of our animals, we don't go in with them. Some of our smaller ones, it's not a problem, but most of them, we offer them the option to go outside or into a smaller holding area in the back. So they can be safe 
our staff can be safe and we can go in there and do the dirty job of cleaning up all the poop and putting in new enrichment items. Now we're here with our Caribbean giant cockroaches. You have a chance to see a much smaller tank or much smaller terrarium, a smaller exhibit design here at the Calgary Zoo, but equally as important that we take into consideration all those factors that we've been talking about. You get to see the humidity being produced by one of our small humidifiers or a reptifogger. That's a common thing in some of our small animal enclosures. And you also get a chance to see how we've built the enclosure. So like we talked about with Zool, different places for them to hide and explore. Lots of good climbing structures, lots of great places to, to put their food, and lots of good places to add in different vegetation. So we wanna make sure we're monitoring temperature. We control their lights. A lot of the tanks will have timers. And again, we control their humidity. So these are all different considerations that we take when we're building enclosures. And those considerations just get bigger and a longer list as the animals get bigger. So as animals are bigger in size, as there's more than one individual, or if it's an animal like the parakeets that is incredibly intelligent, then we just have a longer list of factors to consider. And this is why we use a whole team of people from animal care. So that's zookeepers, there's habitat specialists, folks who focus on the plants and the trees that are gonna go into the exhibit, as well as people in our facilities department. So these are project managers, these are engineers and architects who can help us build structurally sound and really structurally innovative and sustainable enclosures for our animals here at the zoo. So today in our take home activity, we've got a quiz for you because these are some really popular pets and different animals that people might wanna have at home. So we've got a quiz for you to find out which pet is right for you. Are you going to be able to mimic the, the features of their environment? Do you want a pet that might live 60 or 80 years? Do you want a pet that you have to feed mice to? So take that quiz and see if you can find a pet that's right for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.